Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha. Namaste. Namaste. On page 445, we're going to begin our appendix. And these are some of Shiva, Shiva's favorite songs. Uh, they all have many tunes, and I'm going to try to recite in some of the tunes that I know and love the most. Uh, be aware that there are many other melodies with which you can sing these songs. The first one is called Shivo Hum. Shivo Hum. Mano Budhyaham Kar Chitani Naham Nachasro Treti Hue Nachagrana Betre Nachabyo Mabumir Natejo Nabayu Chitananda Rupa Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Nachaprana Sanyo Nabe Panchabayu Nabasapta Daturna Ba Panchakosha Nabapani Padam Nachopasta Payu Chidanam the Rupa Shiboham Shiboham Namedwe Sharago Namedo Bamoho Mado Neva De Neva Mazarnia Baba Nadarbo Nacharto Nakamoka Moksha Chidanam the Rupa Shiboham Shiboham Napunyam, Napapam, Nasokyam, Nalukam, Namamprom, Napirtam, Napita, Nayakya, Ahambu, Janam, Neba, Bojam, Naboka, Chidanam, Narupaha, Shiboham, Shiboham, Namritur, Nashanka, Namijati, Veda, Pita neva me neva mata chajanma na pandur na mitram guru neva shishyam chidanam dharupa ha shiboham shiboham aham nir bikalpo nirakar rupo pivut pach sarvatra sarvendri ham ham. Nacha Sangata Neva Muktir Nameha Chidanam Narupaka Shiboham Shiboham Chidanam Narupaka Shiboham Shiboham On page 445, I am not the mind nor the intellect nor the ego, nor the perceptions of consciousness. Nor am I the ears, the tongue, nor the nose, nor eyes. I am not the ether, nor the earth, not fire, nor wind. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. I am neither the life force, nor the five forms of breath, Neither the seven constituent elements of the body, nor the five sheaths or coverings. I am not speech, nor hands, nor feet, nor even the organs of reproduction and elimination. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. I have neither attraction nor repulsion, neither greed nor delusion. Neither are the attitudes of ignorance nor jealousy present in me. Neither have I, I any dharma, an ideal of perfection, nor any wealth, nor artha, no desires, nor liberation. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. I have no merits, nor do I have any sin. I have neither place, uh, pleasure, nor do I have pain. I have no mantras, nor places of pilgrimage, neither wisdom, nor sacrifice. I am not the act of eating, nor the food, nor the enjoyer. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. 
I am Shiva. I have neither death nor fear, nor any distinction of caste. Neither do I have a father, nor a mother, nor even have I been born. I have no friend nor any comrade, neither a guru nor a disciple. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. I have no concept or idea, the form of the formless. I exist everywhere in every manifestation within all that can be perceived. I am not united nor can I be liberated. I am the form of the bliss of consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. See, Shiva is the infinite beyond conception. With what can he be united? All the creation is merely a manifestation of his, a portion of him. The totality of infinite consciousness, how can it be limited? How can it be perceived? How can it be uh, known? It can only be understood in realization. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. He is the form of the bliss of consciousness. This next one is called the Purusha Shukta, and this Purusha Shukta has come to us from Rig Veda. And as compared or contrasted with the one that came in the Rudra Stadhyaya from the Yajurveda. Om Sahasra Shirsha Purushaka Sahasraksha Sakasrapat Sabuming Dishwato Vishwat Yatishtaha Kashangam Purushake becomes the palm Yabutam Yachapabyam Utavrit was Yadishado Yadane Nati Rohati Etava Nas Yamakimato Jayagas Chapurushaka Padusha Vishwabhutani Tripadasya Vritam Diving Triparit Mahudo Purushaka Pado Vasya Hapapat Punah Tato Vishwam Biakramat Sasana Nasadeya Viki Tato Virata Jayanta Virajo ati purushaka, sajato ati rijakata, pashat bhumi patopuraha, tasmanya yat sarvahutaha, samritam prisadajam, pasyum sansja preva yamyam, naranyan gamyascha ke, tasmanya yat sarvahuta, richaha, samani jadire, chandansi jadire, tasmanya dush tasmada jayata, Tasmadishwa Jayata Yeke Jo by Hatataka Kabohi Hajagiri Tasmat Tasmatata Ajavaka Tanya Gamma Hishi Proksham Urusham Jata Magrataha Tina Deva Ayajanta Sanya Harisha Kastake Yakurisham Yatatu Katina Havya Kalpakan Mukanti Masya Seekim Bhagavati Muru Pada Kuchate Brahmato Shyamukamasid Bhagavu Rajanya Kakritaha Uru Tatasha Yad Vaishya Pavyam Sudra Ajayata Janama Manasurja Tastak Show Suryo Ajayata Srutra Bhagusha Sprana Nascha Mukha Dati Rajayata Nabya Asidanta Riksha Gum Shishno Dhyao Samabhartata Pamyam Bhumir Disha Khasrotrat Tata Lokana Kalpakyam Yakurushana Habisha Deva Yagya Bhattanvata Vasantvasya Siddhajyam Krishma Hakita Mahasarata Bihi Sattasya Samparidayas Tri Sattasya Manamita Kapritaha Deva Yagya Bhattanvata Abhagnam Purusham Pasum Yagena Kyakya Maikya Chanta Devastani Dharmani Pratmanyasam Te Hanaka Maki Manaha Satanta Gatra Purve Sadya Santi Devaka Om Please return to page 448 
The Purusha Shukta, remember Puru Isha Iti Purusha. This is the song, the hymn in praise of he who is full and complete and perfect. The Supreme Being has innumerable thousands of heads, innumerable eyes, innumerable feet. He's got thousands of them. Go ahead and count. Even though he extends beyond the universe of manifested objects, he dwells in the space of ten fingers' breadth in the heart of all beings. The entire universe is the Supreme Being. What has manifested past, present, and future? Above all the immortal existence, he provides nourishment for life. The entire existence manifests his glory, which the Supreme Being transcends. The perceivable beings constitute his quarter part, three quarters embodying immortality remain inconceivable in the heavens. That is, all that we can perceive is only one quarter. Three quarters beyond that is the imperceivable, imperceptible existence. Three parts of the Supreme Being is above birth and death. The fourth part manifested as the universe. From this came forth existence which eats and eats not. So all that eats and all that doesn't eat, uh, all that is uh, uh, animate and all that is inanimate has come forth in this manifest existence. Then radiance came forth, and from radiance the supreme being shined. Then he gave birth to the earth with places both high and low. And those are places that we exalt and other places that have been exalted by creation the mountains and the valleys. Then from this sacrifice of great devotion came forth animals of the air, of the forest, and those who live in villages. Remember, we are amongst the animals. And then from this sacrifice of great devotion came forth hymns and songs of praise and sacrificial mantras and the various rhythms of sacrificial scripture all were born. And then were born horses and cows and varieties of life, all came into being in that sacrifice. The sacrifice was blessed, which gave birth to that supreme being. Wow. The supreme being created the earth and the man and the sacrifice, and then the men made sacrifice, and that gave birth to the supreme being. In this way came forth the gods and seers of eternal reality. And then the rishis and the munis and the devas and the devis were born. With great thought was that supreme being manifested. What became his head? What his arms? What his thighs? What his feet? From his head came the knowers of wisdom. And from his arms came kings and administrators. From his thighs came forth those of circulation and distribution. And from his feet, support and sustenance. So this Purusha, this supreme being, is the full, complete body of existence. Puru means full, complete, perfect. Isha means the Lord or ruler, the seer. Thus the seer of perfection or the perfect Lord. He requires every function in order to sustain himself. He needs a central nervous sense, system or intellect, an administrative system, or cir and circulatory and nourishment systems. And this makes him full and complete as an integrated whole. The verse doesn't mean that the children born in a Brahmin family are higher than others. <coughs> Or, as is so often interpreted, rather it shows that the Purusha performs every function and any man wishing perfection must emulate his perfect nature. So each one of us is a Purusha. We're all full and complete. We are all Brahmins. We're all Kshatriyas. We're all Vaishyas. We're all Shudras. 
If you have a, a, an, an intellectual a, a, a system, if you have an intellect, you're a Brahmin. When you use the intellect, you think like a Brahmin. When you defend and administrate, you are a, 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 a Kshatriya. When you circulate goods and services, or within the body, we're circulating nourishment and taking away the refuge. We are Vaishyas in charge of circulatory system, and when we bring in the nutrients and take away the refuge, we are Shudras. His mind gave birth to the moon, and his eyes gave birth to the sun. And from his ears and his breath came the wind, and from his mouth came the Lord of fire. From his navel came forth the atmosphere, and from his head the heavens. And from his feet came the earth, and from his ears the directions. And thus existence became manifest. The gods performed sacrifice with that supreme being as the offering. What? That supreme consciousness gave birth to the man, the man and to the sacrifice. The man made the sacrifice and gave birth to the supreme being and the gods. Then the gods perform sacrifice and offer that supreme consciousness to all. Shine, illuminate with consciousness. And now spring was the ghee, the clarified oil. Summer, the fuel, and autumn, the oblation. Seven were the limitations defined. Three times seven the ingredients used. When the gods offered that sacrifice, they bound that supreme being as an animal. They took that consciousness and they limited it to perceiving divinity. And they made sacrifice of all the animalistic tendencies, all the, all the, all the vibrations which emanated from the lower chakra. They just sacrificed that, and they, in, they diffused or, or portioned out the, the portions of consciousness and the bliss of consciousness to everyone. Now the seven uh, uh, levels of consciousness, seven were the limitations to define bhur, bhuva, swa, maha, janahatava, satyang, and they, they, they've got the gross perception, subtle perception, intuitive perception, the cosmic body of nature, the body of universal knowledge, the body of light, the ultimate truth, consciousness, and bliss. And there are as many sevens as there are, as you can think of, the seven meters, the seven levels of heaven, seven levels of hell, and for all the various attributes classified by seven. So, by sacrifice, the gods gave birth to sacrifice. And the first principles of eternal dharma were established. Yajna, yuj, to unite. The unite, union between the inner fire and the outer fire, the inner light and the outer light, the, the, the individual and the supreme established the principles of eternal dharma. And those who live according to the glorious way ultimately reach the highest abode where the gods dwell in that ancient perfection. If you live according to this glorious way, reciting these verses, understanding these verses, and living this way of life, of sacrificing, of uniting your light with the supreme light, of uniting your soul with the supreme soul, of uniting your purpose with the supreme purpose, then you go to the highest abode of the gods and dwell in that ancient perfection. On page 453, Rudrashtakam Namam Nirbana Rupam Nijam Girajana Gotita Misham Girisham Karalam Mahakala Kalam Ripalam Gunagara Samsara Paranga Tuaham Tusharadri Sankashas Guram Yabiram Manubuta Kopi Prabhasri Sariram Suramoli Kalolini Charukanga 
So long as devotees do not praise the Lord of Oma, there will be no happiness, nor peace, nor purifying austerities in the world. O Lord who resides within every being of existence, be pleased. We do not know what is union, nor how to recite mantras, nor how to perform worship, but O oh, you who shine with peace again and again, we are bowing down to you. Please save us from the pains of birth. O oh, Lord who shines with peace, we are bowing down to you. In this way, the learned ones sing these eight verses in of praise to Rudra, the reliever of sufferings. Remember, Asru Trayate Iti Rudra. Whatever human being will sing these verses with devotion, the Lord who shines with peace will be pleased. On page 458, Lingashtakam. And this is the eight verses and praise of the Shiva Linga, the eternal symbol of the subtle body of, of Shiva. Brahma Murari Surachita Linga, Nirmala Basita Shobita Linga, Janma Majaduk Binasa Linga, Tadranamami Sadashiva Linga. Deva Muni Pravar Archita Linga, Kamatahan Karunakara Linga, Ravana Dharpa Vinasana Linga, Tadranamami Sadashi Palinga, Sarvasukam Di Sulepi Talinga, Budimi Bhattakara Nalinga, Siddhasura Sura Bandita Linga, Pranamami Sadasi Balinga Kanaka Mahamani Bushita Linga Fani Pati Beshti Tashobi Talinga Zaksa Sriyakyabinasana Linga Pranamami Sadasi Balinga Kumkuma Chandana Lepi Talinga Pankajahara Sutho Bita Linga Shantita Papa Vinasana Linga, Tatranamami Sadashi Balinga, Devakana Chita Sebita Linga, Pavir Bhakti Reva Chalinga, Dinakara Koti Pravakar Linga, Tatranamami Sadashi Balinga, Ashtaduro Kori Vishita Linga, Sarma Sabuba Bakarana Linga Ashta Dridra Vinasana Linga Tatpanamami Sadasi Balinga Sura Guru Suravora Pujita Linga Sura Guru Pushma Sadarjita Linga Parat Param Paramatma Kalinga Tatpanamami Sadasi Balinga Let's repay, return to page 458. The lingam is the symbol of the eternal Lord Shiva. It is adored by Brahma, Vishnu, and all the gods. The lingam is taintless, shining, and beautiful. It is the destroyer of the miseries that follow birth. We bow to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The symbol that is adored by the gods and great sages that denotes the destruction of the god of lust, the ocean of mercy, and is the vanquisher of ravenous pride, we bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The symbol is anointed with fragrant unguents like sandal paste, etc. The symbol enhances the intellect and is worshipped by Siddhas, gods, and asuras. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The symbol is adorned with jewels of gold and precious gems that shine with the Lord of Serpents that encircle it and that obstructed the sacrifice performed by Daksha. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva.
The symbol is anointed with vermilion and sandal paste with a large fan shining behind it. It destroys all the sin attained in many births. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The symbol is worshipped by gods with great devotion and shines with the brilliance of millions of suns. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The symbol is seated in, an, in the eight-petaled seat, which is the cause of all creations and destroys all kinds of destitution. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Shiva. The lingam is worshipped by the guru of the gods, Brihaspati, and all of the gods offer flowers grown in the heavenly gardens to the symbol of the supreme soul. We bow down to that eternal symbol of the eternal Siva. This is called the Panchakshar Stotram on page 462. Nagendra Haraya, Trilochanaya, Pasmangarakaya, Makeshwaraya, Nityaya Shudaya, Dikambaraya, Kasmi Nakaraya, Namashibaya, Mandakini Salil Chandan Chachitaya, Nandishwar Brahmatana, Maheshwaraya, Mandar Pushpa Bhagu Pushpa, Subhujitaya, Tasmai Makaraya, Namaha Sibaya, Shivaya Gori Vadanabja Brinda, Suryaya Dakshantwara Nashakaya, Sri Nila Kandaya Prisadwaj Nashakaya, Tasmai Sikaraya, Namaha Sibaya, Oshishta Kumbod Bhavagotamaya, Munindra Devarchita Shekharaya, Chandarka Moishwadara Lochanaya, Tasmi Makaraya Namaha Shibaya, Yakshaswarupaya Jatadaraya, Vinaka Hastaya Sanatanaya, Divyaya Devaya Dikamaraya, Tasmi Yakaraya Namaha Shibaya, Ham Shaksharamidam Panyam, Yapati Shakti Sanito, Shiva Loka Mavadnoti, Shiva Nasa Bodhate, Om Namah Shivaya. Let's please return to page 462. I want to pay and call your attention to the first letter of the first verse. It says, Na. And in the last verse, it, has, it says, Tasmi Nakaraya. The first letter of the second verse says, Ma. And in the second, the fourth line of the second letter, uh, verse says, Tasmi Ma Karaya. The third, uh, the third verse begins with the letter, She. And in the fourth line of the third verse, Tasmi Shikaraya. In the fourth verse, Bo. And in the last line, Tasmi Wakaraya. And the fifth letter, uh, 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 verse begins with the letter Ya. Nama Shibaya. Tasmi Na. Tasmi Ma. Tasmi Shi. Tasmi Ma. Tasmi Ya. And this song is called Panch Akshar Stotram because it explains the meaning of each of the letters in the name of Shiva and each uh, verse explaining that letter begins with that letter and, it, it, and therefore we bow down to Shiva with that letter. Let's commence. He is the king of snakes. He who takes away, Hora, remember that's the name of Shiva, the one with three eyes who covers his body with ashes, the great supreme lord of all, her is eternal. He is eternal, pure, clothed in space, therefore with the letter Na we bow down to Shiva. He is a stone in the midst of the Mondakini river. 
covered by sandal paste, the supreme Lord of bliss, Lord of the foremost, the great supreme Lord of all. He is worshipped with many excellent flowers from the mind, Manbushpa, and all the good thoughts that we think are the offerings to Shiva. Therefore, with the letter Ma, we bow down to Shiva. She, the consciousness of infinite goodness, the blissful face of Gauri, she who is rays of light, the sun, the light of wisdom, who destroyed Daksha's sacrifice, the respected one with a blue throat who destroys while sitting on his bull, therefore with the letter she, we bow down to Shiva. Vorshishta and others from the family of existence. Gotam, the lord of the wise ones. <coughs> Gotam, the lord of the wise ones. And other gods offer to the highest divinity. The moon and the sun and the fire are his eyes, and therefore with the letter war we bow down to Shiva. He is the intrinsic nature of the lords of wealth, who wears matted hair, he holds a spear in his hands, he is eternal, he is divine, a god who uses clothed in space and, the, space, and therefore with the letter Yah, we bow down to Shiva. The five-letter song has such merit that whoever will read it with all their might, Shiva will be extremely pleased and he or she will attain to his proximity. Oh, Namo Shivaya. Let's pause here and see if there are any questions about any of these songs or about any of the material that we've covered so far. Yes, please. Swamiji, I have a question related to the first verse in the Purusha Shukta. Yes. Uh, he is described as dwelling in a space of ten fingers breadth in the heart of all beings. Yes. The, uh, in a verse, the, uh, the poet does not uh, describe the form uh, that is dwelling in the heart. Uh, does he uh, ref or she refer to the, uh, to the physical heart and, or does he refer to the emotional aspect of the mind that the heart is sometimes connected with? Both. He resides in the space of ten fingers breadth in the heart of all beings he fills the Anahata Chakra with all your love, both physically and metaphysically. So here we're talking about your emotional body, we're talking about your physical body. He's there with you all the time. All you have to do is grab hold of him and make that space of ten fingers breath and feel him there in your heart and then let your love expand and pour out. So it is on every level of consciousness, the songs are uh, applicable. On every level. In the physical body, in the conceptual body, in the body of intuition. You can find an application. A question from Vishweshwar from Napa. Namaste Vish. Uh, what does it mean to be the form of the bliss of consciousness? I can't tell you in a word. You're going to have to realize that. This picture the bliss of consciousness. What would it look like? What does it look like to you? What does it taste like? The form of the bliss of consciousness. What does it feel like? What does it, what does it sound like? You ascribe your own dimensions to this infinite form of the bliss of consciousness. And then, how, how can you make it bigger? Because it's infinite. It will grow and grow and grow and grow until it becomes the consciousness of infinite goodness. The form of the bliss of consciousness. Every one of us will require to make our own definition of what that form looks like. I like to conceive it in the form of Sri Ma. When she's not present, I put it in the form of the Lingam, which is the symbol of the subtle body of the infinite consciousness. You'll make your own form. 
Swamiji, another question from Vish. Some devotees feel uncomfortable with the word sacrifice. It sounds as if we are straining, denying, giving up something valuable. Please explain. Please, Vish, the English definition of sacrifice is when everything is going up and you can't go any farther and you, your back is against the wall. You say, I surrender. I surrender when I have no other alternative left. Now, the Sanskrit concept of sacrifice is, oh, please allow me to renounce my attachments by giving up this action to you. This is the privilege that I get to give you this action to demonstrate for you and for me the sincerity of my love for you. What we're calling sacrifice is the capacity to unite. Yajna, from the root yuj, the union between the Agnya Chakra and the light of wisdom that's burning in the Agnya Chakra and the light in the Havan Kun, that's the sacrifice. When we give up or in all of our individuality and unite, when we give up all the I and mine and we become we and ours, that's the sacrifice. Samiji, so question from Usha from Canada. Namaste Usha Ma, Namaste Neo. Uh, Swamiji, it seemed to me, Usha says, that first we have to have something to sacrifice. Not imagine that we do. Are we part of an octave of energy of creation and are needed to do our part of karma yoga in this chain to keep too much and too little in balance? Is the practice of yajna then an intermediate step towards this real sacrifice we are born to make? Ushama, the practice of yajna as we are practicing here is a prelude to the greater yajna which we will be practicing as we give up all of our duality as we give up all of our attachments and I, I, I unite with that supreme divinity in perfect union we unite in yajna for the space of a pot or a homa or for a few hours at a time that's a lot but we do it only for a few hours at a time. At one time, we're going to make sacrifice of this body into the flames of a, 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 a eternal purification and we'll unite for all time. So therefore, yes, sacrifice it is, is, it grows and grows and grows with practice. We, it becomes an expanded version of the sacrifice. Swamiji, a question from Nanda from San Jose. Namaste, Nanda Ma. Uh, Pranam Swamiji, can you please share with us what sacrifices you had to make on your path to Goddess? Thank you very much for your inspiration. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can explain that. Uh, because if I am there to explain what I gave up, then I didn't give it up. It's still with me. So please don't make, re make me recapitulate all that I've tried to give up so that I can remember that it's still here. <laughs> uh, that's not the greatest seva uh, of a devotee. <laughs> to make the, the example of someone who's given up, make them remember all that they've given up. <laughs> However, you can look at the example of my life and see that I could have gone in many, many directions. <clears throat> and perhaps I gave up many other things that I could have been doing. So I can focus my energies, my talents, my, my experience in this direction. And that's a significant achievement just in renouncing all the other paths of life that could call us and choosing one sankalpa so that we could perform one sankalpa with regularity puja pat homa so, it, it, this uh, nitya karma this uh, um, uh, um, 
the, this shud achar, the the acharan of of, 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 uh, of all the eight acharans, come all the eight <laughs> kinds of behavior. Question from Dan from New Jersey. Namaste, Dan. Uh, if Namaste, Samiji. If our pranayam meter is one page, two pages, or one name per breath. Does each of these have their specific benefits and purpose? Yes, absolutely. They all have greater benefits. You'll find the more names or the more pages that you do per breath, the more breath you need to take in in order to recite that many names or pages or mantras or whatever you're using to count with. And thereby, the longer is the space between the, the, the breaths. The kumbhak is a direct re, re, uh, ratio to the purak and the rechak. So it, by chanting faster and longer passages, that you're going to be deep, breathing deep, more deeply and holding your breath longer. And then you're going to get into the regularity of your pranayam. Now, by contemplating one name per breath, you get into the intensity of that name, the definition of that name, the application of the qualities and the attributes of that name to my particular circumstance, to our lives. How do I employ that life? You can go into the philosophy of that name, the etymology of that name, the grammar of the name, the root of the name. You can go into so many aspects of that name and thereby imbibe those qualities and employ them in our lives. Each of the processes has its own merits. So as we go through the, and we practice the various rhythms of chanting, we become proficient on all levels. Obviously, at some time, I must have contemplated every word of every sentence in order to write down the definitions and translations that I have. And that meant I did not only one word per breath, I did sometimes one word per week. <laughs> and contemplating it, and now if I chant five verses to the breath, I know what I'm saying. I know what it means, and it means something more to me. It means something intuitively, it means something intellectually, it means something in my life, and you look at my life, what it has become, and it's a direct result of the study and practice of all of these mantras. Because I know them on the gross level, I know them on the subtle level, and I'm striving to know them ever more intuitively on the, on the intuitive. Swamiji, there's a follow-up question on sacrifice from Nanda. Yes, please. So, Swamiji, do you advise us not to dwell too much on what we need to renounce then? Thank oh, you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I would not recommend that you dwell on what you need to renounce. Uh, I would renounce it. <laughs> I would suggest and implore you to well upon what you are renouncing for. For whom or for what purpose, with what motivation are you renouncing and the things that you are renouncing will renounce themselves. I didn't renounce anything. I just got into the Sanskrit mantras and started studying them and chanting them and looking them up in the dictionary and, and looking in every way I possibly could to employ these things in my life and all the other desires and all the other uh, ways of life came knocking on the door and there was no one home. I was useless. Remember, some people are even good for some things and some people are good for other things. Sadhus are good for nothing. I became a good for nothing. These desires knocked on my head. There was no one home. 
I was busy. Sorry, I got to figure out about the other three parts of this supreme being. I don't have time to go out and party. I'm still looking for the one fourth that manifested. How do I see that much? Let alone the three fourths that are beyond manifestation. So then the party wasn't exciting to me anymore. And neither were any of the other accoutrements that went to the that I needed for the going to the party. And I gave away my tuxedo <laughs> and my black tie and tails and my top hat. <laughs> and I traded it in for a turban. <laughs> so then my cost of living went down. In fact, I was very comfortable. I had more, more fun with people that knew this stuff that were into the same things that I was into. I had more excitement under the, sitting under a tree than I did in a five-star hotel. So I never thought about wearing the top hat again or the tails. I only thought about, God, this stuff is so exciting and it's so unique and the way of life and the perception of life and the opportunities to, to live a, a life of fulfillment, this is so much ever more enriching and empowering to me than to think about going to the party. I didn't renounce the party. The party renounced me. Now I'm now no longer a party man. A question from Ambika following up to Dan's question. Yes, Ambika, namaste. Mm -hmm. Namaste, Shyam. Why does the speed of chanting affect the pranayam? Isn't it the length of the breath that is important? Ambika, as you go faster, you'll need more air to do more breaths, uh, do, do more verses per breath, so that your breath will get longer, your inhalation will get longer as your pr pronunciation gets longer and faster. Let's turn to page 448. And we'll do one verse uh, of the Purusha Shukta. Om Sahasra Chir Shapura Shaka Sahasra Chatsa Hatsra Patsa Booming Sarva Tobi Twa Pratishta Hatta Sam Gulam. Now we'll do two verses. Om Sahasra Chir Shapura Shaka Sahasra Chatsa Hatsra Patsa Booming Sarva Vishwa Tobi Twa Pratishta Hatta Sam Gulam Purisha Kavi Kansa Banga Bhutanga Chibab Yam Bhutan Ritatati Sado Yatane Dati Roati. Now we'll do three verses. Om Sahasra Chir Shapurisha Kasa Hatra Chasa Kasra Patsa Bhubisa Ishwato Bhitwa Ritwa Pantishta Hatta Shant Budam Purisha Kiva Kansa Banya Bhutam Yachbap Yam Bhutam Ritva Sadesa No Yatanita Tu Yil Ruati Tabadasya Mayimata Jaya Gatsa Purisha Kapatosya Bhitva Bhutani Tripanta Shabitam Tibi You see what's happening. In order to do four verses, we need even more air. And that means I've got to wait a little longer before we can start pronouncing, pronouncing them. Purak, Kumbak, Rechak. So that's why. Swamiji, a question from Dan. What is Kashyap's relation to the sun that exists in this physical world? Uh, Kashyap uh, was uh, the name of the sun. Uh, and uh, uh, so he, he, the, one of the names of the uh, sun, uh, sun is Kashyap, he who illuminate, illuminates, uh, the illuminator. So Kashyap Muni was the name of a rishi. He, be he became uh, so illuminated, they called him a sun. Uh, they they called him the illumination. They called the sun a kashyap, as well as the, the, the muni. The what is Namaste Swamiji? Dan asks in the creation story of the ten prajapatis with the family tree. Where does this purusha or purusha shukta come in? 
Uh, let's go to the uh, 36 tattvas of Tantra. Uh, we have Sadashiva and Shakti and Ishwar as the first three. Uh, so there's infinite consciousness or infinite energy and the union between the two. Those are the first three. Then comes Shuddha Vidya, where that Ishwara, that Supreme Being, begins to open his eyes and says, I think there may be something separate from me, something outside of me. That's number four, Shuddha Vidya. Number five is uh, uh, Maya. Yes, there is definitely something out there. There is duality. Now that Maya is perceived through five Kanchukas, five modes of perception. Uh, Kal, Niyati, Raga, Vidya, and Kala. Uh, that is time, space, uh, activity, uh, 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 knowledge, and attribute. That's the first ten. Number eleven is Purush. That is the manifestation of individual consciousness. This full, complete, perfect individual consciousness. So in the scope of Tantra, of the 36 Tattvas, Purusha is number 11. A question from Vishweshwar. Uh, what does it mean to be the root of all? Again, Vish, uh, these are objects uh, for meditation. These are like Zen koans. <laughs> they are impossible to, to demonstratively designate a, 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 definitive, a definitive answer. It has no definitive answer. You will realize that answer. And that realization brings you to the highest, the, the, to the highest, to the root of Aum. That's where it brings you. What is the root of Aum? You tell me. You tell yourself. What is the root of Aum? Where, where, Aum is the infinite beyond conception. Where is there its root? What is the form of the bliss of the infinite consciousness? How can infinity have form? These are all suggestions from your meditation, Vish. Every time you go deeper and deeper into the contemplation of what is the root of all, we come closer and closer and closer to understanding the nature of infinity, the nature of Shiva. We push our minds to the limits of infinity and expand and expand and expand. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaste.